Today my topic is about the verification of temperature rise estimation of large single phase uh, dry type transformers based on uh, simulated loading technique. Talking about the company that I represent, uh, we are located in the northeast of England and uh, we've been there for nearly 40 years and uh, actually we represent a quite a unique position in the transform industry of the United Kingdom as we provide uh, magnetic solutions for a wide range of applications such as, I mean, starting from uh, simple construction uh, of, uh, field transformers, uh, going into renewable energy traction, rail applications, and uh, military applications, marine applications, and so on. Uh, these are some of the products that we manufacture. Of course, we have low frequency transformers and also we are into the high frequency transformers, the quite high power end. And um, this, uh, the, product, the picture of this product is what I'm going to talk about. It's also for a very special application. It's for a particle accelerator application in Oxford. It's for a particle physics laboratory. That is the transformer that I'm going to talk about today, which is a single phase, uh, 1.2 MBA transformer, quite large one for a single phase. So after a little introduction, I'll talk about the theoretical background behind the thermal modeling and uh, the details of the product construction. And then we'll mo move into experimental procedure that we have carried out the tests and so on. And I will finish the presentation talking about the conclusions and some of other research activities that we do at Carroll and Manuel Transformers. So, I think you all know what a transformer is. It's a static electric device that transfers the energy using magnetic coupling. I don't think I need explaining uh, about the basics of the transformer theory here. So going, into, going forward, the transformer is of course a vital component in the transmission and distribution system. And it also plays an important role in the safe operation of the grid. And uh, we have broadly oil cool transformers and dry, dry type transformers. My focus is on the dry type transformers at the uh, today's speech. And um, dry type transformers have several advantages. They have a stronger mechanical structure. Uh, their dielectric strength is better because we are using uh, higher grade insulation materials in this. And uh, we have, they have a better short circuit ability. And uh, they are more environmental friendly compared to oil cool transformers because we are not talking about oil spillage or uh, the disposal of oil, etc. It's a lot easier to install, and then, and they're quite they have a quite a good rating on the power uh, fireproof performance. So the dry type transformers also have the disadvantages like low thermal conductivity and higher, uh, which causes higher higher operating temperatures, which influence uh, the operating life of the product. And um, so this particular transformer, as I mentioned, it's going for a very specific application in a particle accelerator laboratory. So it came up with a very strong specification uh, where we had to meet uh, several criteria like uh, inductance, certain range of impedance, and also long life performance is quite vital. So we decided to do a little bit of detailed thermal analysis and also analysis on uh, the leakage inductance and uh, impedance, etc. Uh, before we construct the transformer. I will not talk about the details that we discussed, uh, that, that we studied on the leakage inductance and the impedance of this transformer, which I presented in a different forum. So I will talk about the thermal aspects uh, here. Obviously, the, the, the temperature rise is caused by the core losses and the conductor losses and losses associated in the structure itself to some extent. And, um, they can, uh, and also for the simplified modeling, we consider the transformer as a geometrically symmetrical structure. And um, for example, a limb of a three-phase transformer can be considered as one uh, object of uh, object in the calculation. So this is an example of the structure, like you have the core here, um, the core of the transformer, and also that you have the cooling channels, the duct bones, and the windings located. So, I mean, this is a simple construction of a transformer. 
Uh, and this is the 3D model that we created for this transformer before construction to make sure that it comes to the uh, comes to the level that we want. So, so when when you're studying on the thermal aspects of this, uh, we define a thermal load factor, and um, so which is. Uh, related to the effective core surface, uh, if, uh, surface load and uh, the core losses, effective, the, the exposed area and the non-exposed area and so on. So we use that to define the transformer core temperature and it also includes some uh, empirical data. I mean, some are based on uh, uh, our historical collection of data in the company. Then you uh, go to the point that you got to estimate the coalescers. I mean, the previous speaker talked about the coalescers, and uh, likewise, the manufacturer specify coalescers to some extent, and there are different techniques to uh, estimate the coalescers nowadays. You can go for basic uh, calculations of hysteresis and eddy current losses. In this way, you got the Steinmetz equation, which is out there, and there are several advanced versions of uh, Steinmetz equation, which we are using at the moment. So. Um, Similarly, uh, for the, we can extend the, the formula for the temperature rise in the windings. Uh, based on these two, of course, we can come to the temperature rise of the windings uh, of the transformer. So moving into the product construction, this is, this is the schematic of the transformer. It was uh, with two secondaries with the one uh, uh, primary. And the ideal structure was, of course, UI structure like we discussed. So this is the schematic of the initial uh, design of the coil that we carried out. And uh, this is how it looks when it was constructed. So simulated loading, I mean, the, we wanted to make sure that the temperatures do not reach higher levels. And obviously, you can't load such a transformer in laboratory conditions, which is quite high power, especially in single phase. One MEA power in single phase is quite high condition to reach in a laboratory. So of course, this situation is identified in the transformer standard 60076 section 11, where they defined a simulated loaded, uh, loading technique. So that is uh, quite simple, actually. I mean, it, uh, what we do is we load the core of the transformer with an open circuit secondary in the first stage and uh, record the temperature rise. And then, of course, after, I mean, when the core is warm, we load the windings. Uh, by short circuiting it, in which case we don't need a very high power. We don't need uh, a megawatt of uh, load of megawatt power. And then uh, there's this empirical formula defined in the standard, which estimates the overall temperature rise of the unit. So, however, uh, even with this technique, the transform is quite large to get that power required out of a single phase. I mean, if you try to get that power out of a single phase, it causes, a, it causes an unbalance. So the solution we did was we constructed a phase conversion transformer, which is sometimes called as a, a open delta transformer you might have heard of. So with this, you have a three-phase input, and you can get a single phase output. It gives a reasonable balance to the input side. So this is a picture of the transformer that we constructed in this way. So this transformer was tested uh, over a weekend. So to, uh, I mean, the, the core was tested for about 25 hours and another 25 hours for the windings. And then based on that, uh, this is uh, when it was arranged for testing. So we got the temperature rises measured uh, for the core and the windings. And then it is project, pro projected based on the simulated loading method to these values. And uh, so with these things, we could come to the conclusion that uh, the tra transformer doesn't reach excessive temperature during its full load operation, which means it's a certain guarantee that it will work for a long time. I mean, we, we, we constructed with a class H insulation system, and we, want, we didn't declare it as a class F1, but we wanted to keep it, uh, uh, the temperature rise levels in the range of class F uh, temperatures. And also, the, we could observe that the theoretical estimations that we made was reasonably accurate. accurate. It, I mean, the, the, you could see a difference of like plus or minus 10 degrees in some cases, but um, I mean, with this level of analysis in a, in, the, in a practical situation, I'm quite satisfactory to get uh, such a close hit, actually. And uh, obviously, you can explain the differences. I mean, uh, you can't make a perfect estimation of the losses. Uh, if, and. Uh, and also a certain amount of losses, like eddy current losses, especially with the taps. This is a product with a number of taps there. You can't make accurate estimations on those things, so those contribute for the differences. 
And uh, so as the further developments, of, of course, we are doing a little bit more work towards the, this direction. So to be capable of constructing, I mean, this kind of somewhat unusual uh, the products with unusual demands, like uh, single phase mega VA range uh, power requirements. Uh, apart from this, uh, we are carrying out a number of research and development activities at the company. One of them is, uh, like I said, the extension of these uh, thermal studies. And another interesting thing that we are doing at the moment is the short circuit, uh, uh, the evaluation of the short circuit conditions on a dry type transformer. We are evaluating the effect of uh, short circuit forces on the structure of the transform and how much it, it affects. Uh, it affects the the physical. Um, shape of the transformer, thereby the, uh, the, the inductance or the impedance of the transformer. I mean, it's, we're not doing it for a very simple one. It's one with the, like several taps and uh, about 600 kBa size. So it's a, it's a quite uh, challenging thing to do. Um, another very interesting that we are doing is uh, uh, we have come up with an idea to produce a, a multiple charger for electric vehicles. Uh, which is capable of charging about 10 cars rapidly at the same time. So which means we are handling about uh, half a megawatt in there. With, uh, with this concept, I mean, we have a magnetic approach for the power factor correction stage, which eliminates the vulnerability of switch mode power supplies. And uh, we managed to get some uh, European Union funding for this project, actually. And, uh, Oh, apart from the low frequency end, we are doing some research on the high frequency uh, transformers also. Somebody familiar with the high frequency transformers know that the power that you can reach in a high frequency transform is a function of the frequency. So we managed to reach uh, a power of 50 kilowatt in a 50 kilohertz transformer, which is a quite, quite a high achievement. And, uh, and also we managed to get into 100 kilowatt uh, of a 20 kilohertz uh, application. I presented this one in Nuremberg yesterday, which was well received, actually. I mean, this is like the highest power level that you have managed to get in and get in a single module at this frequency level. Further, we are doing some more activities on 12 pulse and 18 uh, pulse rectifier applications. So thank you. Thanks. <laughs>